Hello there! What is going on everyone? Today we are doing a loot breakdown for Dungeons & Dragons Onslaught, the new miniatures game from WizKids set in the deepest, darkest dungeons of the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition world. We are going to be having our parties go through, trying to find loot. This loot right here, we're going to look at all of it and hope that you can make out of the dungeon with some of it before the other team comes in and kills you and tries to take your loot or get more XP than you or accomplish the objective or any of that good stuff. If you want to check out more about Dungeons & Dragons Onslaught, I have lots of other videos. You can check those out. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be looking at all of the loot. Uh, also, if you guys are interested in sticking around, we also are giving away a $25 Amazon gift card giveaway right now. All you have to do to enter to win that is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. Also, I invite you to check out our Discord. Um, speaking of loot, there are mimics in this game, and if you want to enter to win the fancy, fancy, shiny mimic and mimic miniature, look at that thing. We are, that is going on in the uh, in the Discord right now. So that is running until this game actually comes out. Uh, so at the end of January, we're actually going to be announcing a winner for that. So you still have time to jump in there. Plus, we talk about all kinds of tabletop games, a lot of Star Wars games too, uh, in our uh, in, in the Discord. So definitely check that out. So other social media links are all down there. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and start talking about these loot cards. We'll do a breakdown of each one. So while we're talking about this loot, I want to just also talk about the tokens because there are going to be four treasure chest tokens on your board. And when your character gets to one of these, you're going to be going to the handy dandy loot envelope and pulling out three of these loot tokens. You're going to be able to look at these and choose one of them and you'll be able to keep one and put the other ones back in. That's kind of how looting works. However, there are, before we talk about the loot tokens, there are some bad things uh, because you might reveal a mimic, right? We talked about the mimic a little bit. You might reveal a loot goblin. There's actually two loot goblins and two mimics that are in there. <clears throat> so the mimic is actually going to be a, a monster that sticks around and moves kind of slow, has a little low, a, you know, low armor class, has five health and can chomp on you. And uh, then of course, if you do kill it, then you get the treasure that's inside. And there's actually uh, the possibility to have two of those. So they do give you two cards. Plus we do have the handy dandy promos. Look at those, courtesy of WizKids. So we're gonna be able to, you know, do some, some giveaways and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, and the loot goblins, are actually a little different. They don't have a card to go with them. They usually just kind of, if they're in the scenario that you're playing, then they might just try to run uh, and you know, you're kind of trying to make sure they don't escape or something like that. Um, so they, they kind of move, they don't really attack. Uh, but outside of those, I wanted to include them since they are certainly related to loot. You do have all the different treasure tokens. All the treasure tokens have a loot side. If your character has one of them, you can choose as a free action to reveal it. Uh, if it's not revealed, then you kind of can't use it. So you have to kind of reveal it. Uh, you, sometimes you want to keep these hidden. Sometimes you won't. And, uh, and, you know, and it's up to you. But you can only do that on your turn. Now, you also can have only one of three different types of loot. You can only have one weapon, one armor, and one accessory. Uh, at least that is revealed. You can, If you want to keep them face down, you can do that. And you can also trade loot to other characters. So that is pretty cool. Now, there are 20 cards in here. I have them sorted 1 through 20. The first 15 are the ones you're going to be using in the more standardized or competitive games, uh, whereas the last five are really only used in like the first couple, uh, the first several scenarios uh, that will call for them. They're a little bit more scenario dependent. With that being said, let's go ahead and start looking at them. So starting with card number one, we have the Masterwork Melee Weapon. Uh, this is a, it counts as a weapon, and it's just going to give you plus two to hit with all of your melee attacks. All right, that symbols for your melee attacks. Pretty cool. Um, and, and then again, that's just gonna, it's gonna add plus two to hit, pretty simple. Um, similar to that, card number two, which is gonna look like this, it's the bow symbol. And again, every symbol on here is gonna be unique and it will synchronize to one of these. So don't, like if you draw this bow, it's not the same as that. So the symbol has to match. So that you have to find the, the specific one. And it, it like there it is. So if you got this this token, you would get this card. Uh, Master Work Ranged Weapon is next, and that's plus two to hit with all your ranged attacks. So that's pretty good. Maybe on a mage 
or a, a, or somebody with a bow, like Gribble Shanks or something like that. Uh, number three, uh, what am I doing? Let me let me flip this over. I'm gonna do it just like like that. There we go. We have Masterwork Focus plus two to hit with all of your cooldown abilities. That's kind of cool, but that's probably a little bit less good because a lot of the cooldown abilities, not all of them, but a lot of the cooldown abilities um, happen to also include a ranged or melee or missile attack, uh, or, or a missile or a uh, ranged attack, or missile or ranged <laughs> melee or ranged attack. Uh, and uh, but but some but not all of them do. Some of them are uh, their own special thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, Moving forward, we are going to start with this armor piece here. And uh, did I show you the back of the Masterwork Focus? That's that Ankh symbol. Um, masterwork Armor here is that uh, that piece of armor. And that one just gives you a straight up extra two armor class. All right, plus two. Very nice. Like that one quite a bit. <clears throat> We've got a shield symbol here for the next one. And that's Arrow Catching Shield. While defending against an attack from an enemy beyond range one, Gain plus four armor. I love it. Plus four armor class. And again, these this one's an armor. You know, the, the, the other two were weapons. This one's an accessory. So I guess you can actually have Masterwork Focus combined with a Masterwork Ranged Weapon or, or, or something like that if you wanted to. Arrow Catching Shield is armor, though. Again, restricting you to only one. Here's another piece of armor that's probably an armor. And yes, it's the Adamantine Armor. It's only plus one armor, but critical effects cannot be resolved against you. Uh, that's going to be more situationally good. I think in general, I'd probably rather have the Masterwork Armor. Uh, but this would probably be good on a tank uh, or, or somebody who already has really high armor and is really trying to protect against those, those natural 20s or even the other characters that exist that have uh, specialty crits that can crit on... Uh, on numbers less than 20. There's characters that, there's things that can crit on 19. Uh, there's even some stuff in some of the expansions that can crit on an 18. So uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good card. Uh, next up, we've got another piece of armor. It is uh, I-7. This is armor of elven kind. Enemies cannot take reactions after your moves. This one is fantastic. Every character in the game has some type of reactive ability and most of them uh, are responding to a movement. So this is really good for objective play uh, or to escape. Uh, I really like it. We have a weapon here. This one is the Flame Tongue. Really nice uh, sword. It is the. Uh, it's got a melee attack. It, uh, it's a standard action, and it is a elemental based attack. And it targets an enemy at range one. It has a plus six to hit, and it does three damage. But its critical effect is plus two additional damage. So this one can hit for five. Really, really strong weapon. Especially cool on a character that doesn't have a really strong melee attack as well. Uh, that's one a thing that is... And this is something like maybe... This is like an example of maybe a card that I would kind of keep hidden. So if I had the, the Flame Tongue, which would maybe be this one right here, because it matches, right? If I had that, I want to keep it on this way until... And let, let, maybe if on a mage, and let, oh, are you getting close to me? Oh, darn, you're getting close to me? Okay. Maybe not on a mage, because some of the mages have some nasty close-range stuff too. But maybe I'm a... You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm more of a ranged character that doesn't have strong melee. And then all of a sudden on my turn, I'm like, free action. Oh, by the way, I had the flame tongue. Boom. And sometimes just keeping a loot card face down puts that doubt in your opponent's mind. And maybe they'll keep their distance from you. That's a cool thing. All right, we have another sword here. Uh, this is the dancing sword. Uh, this is a, a standard melee attack, physical. Uh, enemy at range one, plus six to hit. Uh, it deals two damage, but if you get a critical with it, you get to make another attack with this weapon at a range of one to five. This is really a cool thing, and it it, it has me wondering if there's going like if you what what would happen if you were to you know uh, crit with that attack and then you know have another like could you and how many times could you chain this right? I mean, I, granted, you're not going to roll a twenty that many times in a row. But uh, but that is cool. That could be really good on somebody who has a natural ability to crit on a 19 or 20. Like, I think some of the uh, characters in the faction packs have that. So, pretty cool stuff. All right, next up we've got a, uh, a bow and arrows here. It's the Vicious Longbow, another weapon. Uh, it is a standard action and a physical. An enemy at range 2 to 5. It has plus 6 to hit. It deals 2 damage, but it has a critical of either 19 or 20 giving it an extra plus 
one. So this doesn't mean your character as a whole can always crit on 19 and 20. It's just this weapon that is allowing itself to crit on a 19 or 20. All right, continuing on, we've got card number 11. It's uh, It's got that awesome glaive on the back, and it is the Magic Glaive. Uh, the Magic Glaive is a standard uh, standard action, like just about every attack is. Uh, you're going to attack an enemy at range 1 to 2. I think that's the divine symbol. Uh, at range 1 to 2 is plus 6 to hit. Uh, deals 2 damage. After I, I like the reach on it, right? After an enemy at range 1 to 2 moves, if it moved a space further away from you, make a melee attack against that enemy, and it has the critical of plus 1 damage. Now, what's nice about this is it has a, its own reactive thing. Again, remember there's that other card too that people can't take reactions uh, against your stuff. So, um, you know, again, that's just more more reactive movement restrictive stuff, uh, basically kind of like doing an attack of opportunity on someone. Uh, and I like that it just lets you do that. Uh, and there's like there's no limit to it either. So if you could put this on somebody who's tough, they could just move in to the whole group. And uh, anybody that wants to get away from you, like, you know, you could be attacking like crazy. That's a really strong weapon. Um, we've got this ring here. Uh, this is card number 12. Uh, at the start of your activation, you get to heal one. It's the Ring of Regeneration. Uh, that's a nice one. This is a good one to get early in the game. A lot of the uh, scenarios have a, a restricted number of rounds. And this isn't going to do you so good if you get it later in the game or if you're a character that's not really going to take much damage like if you kind of hide in the shadows uh you know this one might not be as good for you but if you do get hit kind of early or often this is a great one all right next up we've got oh the potion it's the fireball in there what is it it's the potion of fire breath uh this one basically lets you do kind of what, what the burning hands spell uh, standard action elemental uh it's a cone of three which again cones are one square out then you go on another square out, but then you expand. So then it's like one square in front of you, then three squares in front of that, and then five squares in front of that. You do that three times. It's got a plus seven to hit, uh, two damage. Uh, and if you, uh, <laughs> you if you uh, you kill this card if you suffer damage and a, a critical of plus one and kill this card. So if you get hit while holding this, all of a sudden it's gonna ex you know it kind of burns out. You drop it and it, it gets destroyed. But if you roll a critical, like if you drink too much or you breathe too hot, it also dies. Very cool card. Very cool. All right. Next up, card number 14. It's the Invisibility Powder. Now, this one is not a standard action to use. It's a bonus action, uh, which also means that you wouldn't be able to use it on the turn that you, uh, let you, that you looted it unless you were to downgrade another uh, move action into a bonus action because you you're going to probably spend your bonus action to loot the chest but this you know you may want to save this in one of my games i saved this one for you know to, to until the enemies came nearby and then i was trying to escape with it it allows you to apply powder and you gain invisible and it's reminding you what it does monsters ignore you while resolving their activations and you cannot be the target of attacks unless those attacks are cone or area of effect attacks so basically your opponent in pvp your opponent cannot target you either which is really really cool all right next up it is a healing potion this is card number 15 and this is the last of the standard cards that you'll see in most of your games it's just going to let you quaff the potion uh you're it's a bonus action to do that it's going to heal you for three but then it's gone so uh that's the uh, those are the the 15 normal cards uh, we do have five more that are going to be a little that aren't going to be used in the standard games, uh, or at least the the final three scenarios on the map. But they will be used in the uh, the the all the other scenarios that are more more narratively driven. Um, so let's start with the North Portcullis Key. Uh, this is card number sixteen, uh, and the Portcullis is one of the square uh, the square cardboard tokens that you can put in the uh, in the ground. And normally they are like it's like, you know it's basically the Portcullis is closed. And that's part of the objective is to go get that. Of course, that would, this would only make sense in a particular uh, scenario that wants you to be able to get into the portcullis or through it. Uh, if you hold that key, you, of course, you get to ignore the walls that are adjacent to it. Basically, you're like opening it up. Same thing with the south portcullis key, which is card number 17. Well, you occupy the southern control point and your party holds that point. Your party ignores the wall adjacent to the point where the moving and attacking. Um, so... 
uh, you're able to open the south port colors. Uh, next up, car, uh, number 18. Uh, this is the Rune of Might. After you deal damage to a champion, heal one, and it suffers one damage. So every time you hit a champion, uh, you're going to do one more damage, and you're going to recover one. So what are champions, and why is this not in the normal game? The champions are the larger monsters, like the Etten, or the Troll, or the Young Black Dragon. Right? Those, uh, they, they're, they're special, they're really, really powerful, they're kind of like bosses, and those aren't in... The, the final three scenarios, those aren't in like the year, uh, what I believe is going to be your, your competitive game. So only the scenarios that, that have champions are going to do that. Um, all right, and number 19 is the Rune of Protection, also a champion-related card. Uh, it says, when you suffer damage from a champion, that damage is reduced by two. Note that there's not a, to a minimum of one, uh, like there sometimes is. So if he only hits you for two damage, you're getting off scot-free. Uh, so that's really cool. And then the last card, char card number 20 here is the Rune of Stealth. Champions ignore you while resolving their activations. You cannot be the target of uh, the uh, of uh, their attacks that are, unless, of course, they are uh, cone or area of effect attacks. And just for re reference, here's the the one port, what is it, the back, sorry, the north portcullis key, the south portcullis key, uh, the Rune of Might, the Rune of Protection, and the Rune of Stealth. And that's uh, that's all the cards. All right, everybody, so those are all the loot cards and all of the tokens as well as the bad tokens. So hopefully that answers a lot of questions. I know I had some people asking about those, but let me know what you want to see next for Dungeons and Dragons Onslaught. It is a super fun game, and uh, hopefully you guys are, have it pre-ordered and have it showing up soon. I know you're going to enjoy it. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it as much as I have. I want to hear from you guys what your thoughts are, especially after you've played it. Come back and let me know. I want to thank you all so much for watching. A big thanks to my patrons as well. You guys are absolutely fantastic and help make this channel possible. So thank you for your continued support. I will talk to you soon. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on dudes and Hakuna Matata.